I'm very happy today to speak with Vince LaRufa. Uh, Vince is the Senior Vice President of Resort Marketing at Universal Orlando Resort, an amazing leader in our industry. We're going to be speaking about what he did uh, during the pandemic, uh, how he's leading his team, and we'll talk as well about uh, work-life balance and uh, the fact that uh, he's or was also a major drummer, a great drummer. Enjoy listening to Vince. Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Business of Meeting podcast. And today I am joined with a friend, uh, an amazing leader in our industry. He's the Senior Vice President Resort Marketing at Universal Orlando Resort. Uh, if you are in the meeting and event industry, you know him, you've met him, you appreciate working with him as a true leader. Vince LaRufa, Vince, thank you so much for taking the time, my friend. Good morning, Eric. Nice to be with you. That's awesome uh, to have you on this podcast. And I know you're extremely busy you know, all over the place. But before we get into that, um, I'm always uh, curious to know how people join our industry. So what did little Vince thought about doing in his life and, and how did you get into our industry? Well, you know, honestly, when I was a kid, I had visions of uh, playing drums in a rock band, but obviously that didn't materialize. So uh, I... I, I really navigated uh, and, and, and found my way to the hospitality industry in a very unusual circumstances. Uh, I was working in downtown Philadelphia selling office equipment, and uh, I had a 300-pound Canon copier on a push cart, and it started to slide off of the cart, and it ended up in my lap, and I ended up in the gutter. Uh, on Chestnut Street, and a friend of mine that I had worked with in my first position out of school happened to be walking by, and I hadn't seen her in several years, and she helped me uh, stand back up again and asked me um, what I was doing, and I said, well, uh, you, as you can see, I'm not enjoying what I'm doing very much, and she said, uh, I asked her about the same question. And she said, actually, I'm working as a catering manager at the Franklin Plaza Hotel, which was the newest hotel it had just been built in downtown Philadelphia. It was a beautiful property. And I had watched them build it uh, with a downtown territory. So I kind of kept track of it. And um, she mentioned that they had a small group salesperson position available and uh, I said, please get me an interview because I'm not sure I can take another day of this. And um, after three or four interviews, uh, finally, I was I was hired for that position. And uh, I was lucky uh, because I realized for the first time in my professional life, short as it was at that time, uh, that I had a true passion for hotels and hospitality. And uh, and so I enjoyed it. I was not uh, afraid to put the time in. I worked very hard at it and uh, was able to move rather quickly uh, through the ranks uh, at the time. And I ended up taking a transfer to Orlando as a salesperson at what is now the Renaissance across from SeaWorld. And um, uh, luckily had a general manager came in, uh, Stouffer took over. It was a Wyndham at the time. Uh, Stouffer took over and uh, the GM and I really formed a, a really strong relationship and bond. And he essentially took me with him uh, as he progressed through the organization. He worked his way up to senior vice president of operations. And in that amount of time uh, was kind enough to help me move as well. And so as he moved, I moved. And uh, we formed a, a very good team. And ultimately, that led to being a regional uh, with Renaissance. So I worked my way up to regional uh, sales and marketing. And then uh, at that point, Marriott came in and uh, bought the company. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I stayed with Marriott for about a year, then took a position in Atlanta with Stormont Trice Corporation as VP of sales and marketing. And that became Crestline Hotels and Resorts. Uh, so they asked me to stay on as VP of sales and marketing for Crestline. And then uh, when Crestline asked me to move to Tyson's Corner, uh, my wife and I really 
didn't want to move north. Uh, we were pretty happy in the south. And so I took a position as VP of sales and services with Visit Orlando. Uh, and my good friend, Mike Gamble, actually had the search on, on that job. And then interestingly, uh, 18 months later, Mike had the search as well for the VP of uh, sales, resort sales at Universal. And uh, he tagged me again. And uh, I was able to take that position. And I've been there for 18 years. Uh, about three years ago, I was promoted to senior vice president of resort sales and marketing. So we had three hotels when I got there. We have eight hotels now, 9,000 rooms to fill. And uh, it's been a great ride. That's awesome. And what is the, um, the motivation when, when you go and you change uh, position? Uh, is it opportunity only? Is it uh, because you, um, you want to learn more? Or is it, uh, you know, people always say that you, you leave um, a, a manager uh, or a boss, you don't leave a company and you stay with a manager or a boss or you don't stay with a company. Uh, what, what was the, the common thread, if there's any, between uh, the different job you had? Well, uh, all of the positions really up to Crestline were, um, you know, I, 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 they were promotions, essentially, uh, with the company that I was working for. And um, so we really benefited in, in that respect. Uh, I had a lot of great leaders over the years uh, who I really enjoyed working with. The move to Orlando to visit Orlando, uh, you know, candidly, the leader of that organization at the time and I were not always aligned. Uh, mm -hmm. He had tremendous accomplishment in the industry, but it was really, I think, more of a style issue for me. And the two of us candidly didn't work very well together. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I really grew to respect those that are serving in the DMC, uh, uh, you know, uh, convention bureau environment, because right. it's just a tremendous uh, amount of time and travel. And, yep. you know, my kids were very young at the time, and I was gone many times for, you know, weeks at a time, it seemed, mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't really compatible with where my priorities were. I mean, you know me well enough to know family comes first with me and yep. uh, we share that uh, commonality. Absolutely. And uh, it, and candidly, the opportunity at Universal was too good to pass up. It was a, a significant move you know, for me at the time. Even with three hotels, people would question me at the time and said, Vince, why would that be even remotely interesting to you when you've sat over 35 or 36 hotels? Uh, the, the answer to that is that it's such a unique environment at Universal. It's something new every day. I think you know our history. You know that in 18 years, Universal has evolved from essentially what it amounts to a regional theme park business to a destination resort, uh, making memories for many, many families. And Yep. We continue to grow. We continue to look at new opportunities with new properties, new hotels. Uh, the process of integrating hotel marketing with destination marketing uh, and and making sure that we're completely immersed in all of the right places in Universal's very significant marketing uh, uh, program is something that requires thought and uh, strategy really on a daily basis. So I found it to be intellectually challenging. And of course, I enjoy leading a team and I have a tremendous team there in Orlando. Most of the team, in fact, I had three direct, four direct reports, including my assistant. She's been with me 18 years. Our top revenue person has been with me 18 years. Uh, our top group sales leader has been with me 18 years. Wow. So we, we have a very tight knit group. It's sort of a, uh, a second family to me and they're tremendously talented and we work extremely well together and we've been able to marshal this growth and, uh, and really tr help transform 
that destination into a full-blown vacation destination with theme parks, entertainment, complex, and of course, hotels. Absolutely. Uh, When you're talking about, you know, the different uh, opportunities you have, uh, talking about working with the the same people for years, and that tells a lot, uh, I guess, about your your leadership and, and your human side as well. You're also a li- um, lifelong learner. And uh, recently, I think you, you did the, the master in hospital management at San Diego State University. W- what really motivates you to, to do that? And what would be your advice for um, the, the, the young people getting into our industry uh, who believe that maybe now that they've finished their studies, they don't have to study anymore uh, till the end of their life? Yeah, I, I mean, I think what motivated me, and I, I pursued my master's in my 50s. Uh, and, you know, at the time, obviously, I had a full time job. I had, you know, I was helping my kids with their homework uh, at the time <laughs> and then uh, was doing my work, you know, from 10 p.m. to midnight or sometimes later. Uh, but I enjoyed it so much. I had kind of gotten to a place, Eric, of, um, I, I refer to it as intellectual hibernation and, uh, you know, being as much as I enjoyed the Orlando experience and the universal experience, you know, I'm hiring, uh, kids out of school with master's degrees, uh, as at the rep level, which is really, you know, more of an entry level to management and realizing that there was a, uh, vocabulary that, uh, I hadn't really, in many cases, been exposed to. And so um, I wanted to uh, continue on my journey and continue learning and continue, you know, to be challenged and to be able to challenge others. Uh, And the San Diego State University program was really the perfect solution for what I was looking for at the time. I was able to do the work uh, on my time. Uh, the, I thought the quality of instruction was, uh, very, very, of a very high level. Uh, my mentor in that program was a gentleman by the name of Jeff Campbell. Jeff is, was the, he was the executive director of the program. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a former CEO of Burger King. So that's the caliber of people that, uh, uh, are involved and many of, uh, of your listeners probably also are familiar with Carl Winston. Carl heads up that uh, program out there and does a fantastic job. And so I wanted to stay closer to it. Uh, Jeff asked me last year to teach the marketing communications class. Uh, I partnered with one of my colleagues uh, here in Orlando and the two of us uh, created the curriculum for for that class uh, and it's a master's in meetings and events. Moving forward, I'm going to be also teaching the marketing class uh, for the hotel and uh, tourism group, uh, hospitality and tourism master's program. So uh, I'll have two classes going uh, when we get into it uh, next year. So looking forward to that. That's awesome. Look, talking about next year, um, hopefully there's going to be completely different than this year and the previous one. How did you navigate uh, this pandemic, uh, what was the, um, decision taken, uh, at, at the resort in Orlando and, and maybe is there, was there any difference between, uh, what was done in Florida and what was done in California? Yes. Uh, t- tremendously different, uh, not as a result of a different kind of thinking from a business perspective, because obviously we have the same leadership in California, uh, as we have, uh, in Orlando, uh, my boss oversees marketing, for example, for both destinations. Uh, the thing about COVID and the impact on COVID was, first of all, we're fortunate enough in our case to work for a tremendous company. Uh, Universal managed that situation uh, just better than anything I could have imagined. Um, the sensitivity to team members uh, the willingness to give team members time uh, to uh, understand that this could be a longer term problem. Uh, you know, we did 
uh, have to eliminate staff uh, in, in, in my area as well. Uh, I didn't have any weak links, so they were very difficult decisions. Uh, we had about 70 people, and, and, uh, and unfortunately, some of those people are not on the team today. Mm -hmm. uh, the company, though, I think took a very proactive approach. Obviously, the safety and well-being of our team members and our guests was at the forefront of every decision that was made. We had daily calls at the time. Uh, to talk about how we were going to uh, approach the protocols and everything else that we needed to be confident about. Uh, you know, we were shut down for two months completely. We had shut down every hotel. All the theme parks uh, obviously were closed as well. And, uh, and we're in a state uh, where it is a, a business-friendly environment in terms of the governor's perspective on uh, how to approach COVID and coming out of COVID. There, of course, there are different points of view out there as to uh, which approach was right. California's approach is very different than Florida's. Uh, but I think in retrospect, looking back at the point of view brought to the situation by our state government and our local officials allowed us to get open sooner. Mm -hmm. And in Orlando, Universal was the first theme park to, to a theme park uh, to open, reopen. Yeah. And, and we, we kept the lights on, so to speak. Yeah. And I think we preserved a lot of jobs as a result of it. Uh, and now uh, what we've seen uh, more recently in the last 60 days or so, we've had record booking levels. Uh, we've had uh, record numbers of calls coming into the guest contact center. Uh, we are we are back. And, uh, you know, candidly, we the issue for us now is hiring enough staff mm -hmm. uh, quickly enough to be able to serve the guests that we're welcoming. So that's a much nicer problem to have uh, than the one that we encountered 13 or 14 months ago. So I'm very proud of uh, the way our company handled it. I'm very proud of the way uh they treated all of us as team members. Uh, Universal put its money where its mouth is, and uh, and it's not the first time that that that's been the case. And so, I'm you know I'm, I'm proud to be part of the leadership team because I think we made a lot of good decisions, uh, and uh, and we did it collaboratively. We did it together, and I think the proof is in the pudding in terms of uh, where we are today. That's an expression that uh, the uh, immigrant in me always has issues to understand. Why is the proof in the pudding? <laughs> you know, I, I should have probably been more thoughtful about my choice uh, of uh, m expressions, uh, but uh, I don't know, Eric. That's that's a good question. In fact, when we're done today, I, I'll I will I'll pursue that, and I'll let you know exactly where. What, where that originated? <laughs> Thank you. Um, but you know, coming back to to a conversation, I, I think um, what I'm I'm learning from what you say right now, it's you know, especially the difference between uh, California and Florida. As a business owner or as a, a leader, they're they're the decision you can take, and then the the non-negotiable. The non-negotiable are things you don't have impact on, which is sometimes legislation, which is sometimes the environment, where there's little you can do or say about it uh and then you have to make decision because because you're running a business right yes and it's not really in that sense there, there's some parallels right it's it's not unlike other circumstances sometimes that occur as as leaders in business you as a business owner you can't control all of the variables things will happen and so all you can do is be thoughtful and strategic about how you approach those opportunities. Uh, and, you know, look, I, I certainly hope we never have to experience what we experienced uh, in the last 13 or 14 months. Right. But I also tend to be a, a cup is half full person. And I look at the opportunity that my wife and I had to have our kids back home. We never thought they'd be coming back home. <laughs> so, uh, you know, to, to have my 
my daughters around us every day again while while I worked from home. Uh, and frankly, there were some days there wasn't a whole lot to do, particularly when we were shut down. So it it gave us an opportunity to reconnect. And uh, we added a new member to the family. We have a, a one year old uh, a poodle uh, that uh, has endeared himself to all of us. And so he's a, he was a covid baby. So, um, you know, it's 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 there's there's always a silver lining and mm -hmm. uh and, and and that was it for us i i like it i, I like the the approach um is there anything that you think are going to not come back to what it was before change in terms of uh working from home because uh I, i'm with you i was very happy to have uh, my daughters at home as well uh, a lot of people actually found the same silver lining of working from home no commute thing the family Um, and they're not necessarily keen on coming back to the office or at least full time to the office. And obviously, if you're in an hotel, if you're in a, a, a team park, you cannot do it remotely. So right. how are you navigating this? Well, those of us that are considered back of house, you know, we're not guest facing team members. Um, you know, we will be coming back uh, and, and particularly in the marketing area. Uh, we looked at the landscape, the, the leadership group really came together and said, what is this going to look like when we come out of it? Because to your point, a lot of our team members enjoy uh, working at home uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, we are going to come back in a hybrid uh, model. So um, whereas I used to get in the car and and fight my way in every day and fight my way home. Uh, I won't be doing that um, moving forward, but we not every day. So we'll, we'll be in probably two or three days a week, I think mm -hmm. is the way we're going to proceed uh, with the understanding that uh, we will trial it and, and I'm confident that it will work. Uh, the other factor, Eric, is as we know the value of face-to-face -face meetings, there is value to being face-to-face -face with your coworkers. Yep. And so uh, I've missed that. That's that's one thing I've very much missed in uh, in the last uh, 13 or 14 months is this uh, lack of direct communication with my friends. So, we, you know, we opened Velocicoaster, the brand new roller coaster, and we had a press event. And uh, so on Tuesday night, uh, we welcomed the press to our newest hotel, which is Dockside Inn and Suites, part of the Endless Summer Complex, uh, our, our first run at True Value Hotels. And so we invited the press over to experience the hotel. And it was the first time I'd been in a gathering uh, mm -hmm. with uh, others, a larger than one or two people, in without a mask in in a year and a half. So that uh, was was really encouraging. And you 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 realize how much you miss people when you when you see them. I, I did a lot of hugging. So uh, that was great. The other piece of it, though, with respect to working remotely, those that don't have a lot of other team member interaction and don't need it. Um, many of those people prefer to work from home and for us to attract the best talent. If someone wants to live in Louisville and work for Universal Orlando and they're best in class in terms of their talent level and their skill set, we have to look at that because if we don't allow them to work from Louisville, someone else will. And that is the trend. And that is where things are going. And uh, if the if the output of the work is still of the highest level, the highest quality, uh, and that is the preference of the team member, there's no reason not to, to structure a work situation that way. So, so it's competitive concern. You know, we want to be competitive as, a, as an employer. Uh, and it's also about, you know, can the work be done? Well, we've proven that mm -hmm. very effectively. We ramped up All of our hotels, the theme parks, you know, very complex programs and restarts and revisions to media plans, revisions to marketing plans. 
uh, revisions to operating hours, re- you know, y- you name it. Uh, we went through it and, uh, and we did it all from a distance. So if we could work effectively through those kinds of circumstances, then one could argue that you can work effectively through a more of a normalized day-to-day workflow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that's fascinating what you're saying uh, about the organization and re- re- redoing all the plans. What, what I've witnessed as well, um, especially with business owners, uh, is, yes, you, you work from home, but um, there was like even working harder. It's one meeting after the other. There's not even a break. And um, I'm kind of concerned of uh, the, the mental health aspect, uh, especially of entrepreneurs that most of the time are on their own. Uh, what's your take on it? Um, and, and what's your advice for, for business owners uh, as you're reopening and we're going back to a face-to-face? Well, I think, you know, again, that interact, certain level of interaction is healthy. Um, I think it's important, you know, as, as when we started with the process of people working from home, um, we still had regular interactions on Microsoft Teams or, you know, other platforms uh, to keep the team connected. So, you know, there, there is a desire to stay connected. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important when you work from home, too. We, we've, you know, candidly, some of our team members were struggling with turning the work off, mm-hmm. you know. So um, and we, we're all work pretty much around the clock anyway, you know, technology, that's the gift of technology that now we all work, (laughs) you know, when, when we're conscious, we're working. Um, so it's important for people to, to recognize that they do need to step away. Um, and you know, you would think that'd be easy, easier in a home environment. It's probably not, you know, when I'm in my office at work, I always have the option of shutting the door. I typically don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I can. If I need a few moments of silence, I, I, I can do that. It's almost harder, you know, at home uh, with a pet, you know, with other family members. Um, you know, our timing was pretty horrible. We downsized at the time that I started to work at home. So I didn't have an office. And so, you know, it, 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 it takes some work um, to to work in an, uh, you know, in, without distraction. Uh, but it's possible. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's also healthy just to get out every now and then sometimes in the middle of the day, I'll just go take a walk, you know, just to get some fresh air and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and refresh. So. Oh, yeah, I, I was, <laughs> you made me think of this meme that, that I saw recently, the difference between Europe and the U S uh, and, and the out with the out of office message. And in Europe, it was, uh, I'm out camping for the summer. Uh, please send me another email in September. <laughs> and, and in the U.S. is uh, I'm, I'm getting a, a liver transplant uh, tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be out but reachable on my cell phone for two hours. <laughs> yeah, there is a little difference, I think, to the approach. But um, frankly, I think there's a lot we can learn from our friends in Europe when it comes to work-life balance. Uh, but uh, that is where we are. I mean, we we are very productive. Very. And, and that's great. That's a good thing. Trust me. Um, now, Vince, you have always been um, helping others, uh, volunteering. Uh, you volunteer a lot with the uh, MPI. You were a chairman of the, the Global Board of Trustees. What is your recommendation or advice for a younger generation getting into the industry that would say, ah, I don't see the value of, uh, of volunteering or, or being a member of an association? Well, first of all, the joy of our business is people, right? That's yeah. what makes it special. That's how you and I met. That's how um, many of our colleagues have, have met and forged very strong friendships. I can't wait to get to Las Vegas. I get in Monday um, for WEC because yeah. I, there are people I haven't seen in two or three years. So uh, I'm so anxious to get back uh, to that. Um, so not only is it an opportunity to expand your, as a young person, your network. And you know, you, we can't underestimate the value 
of, of a network. Um, almost every position I've ever had in my career was the result of someone knowing me, being familiar with me, and being willing to testify to, to my effectiveness uh, as, as a leader. So, you know, it, it's important for all kinds of reasons, professional reasons, but the most important reason why I would encourage anyone to get involved is it's your industry. Okay. It's our industry. We own it. Whether it's good or bad, we own it. So the only way to affect change is to be a part of the solution. The only way to be part of the dialogue in the solution is to be involved. You can't sit on the sidelines and complain that something isn't right. Something should be this way or that way. Uh, no one wants to hear that. Uh, if you're interested and you want to uh, make a difference, you, you have to do it from a platform. You were a former chairman of IBOD. Okay. During that period of time, you know, the organization benefited from your leadership, from your point of view. You could have chosen not to be involved at all. You could have sat back and let other people make the decisions for you. I prefer to make my own decisions. I prefer to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And volunteering and particularly for our younger people at at the local level get involved in the chapters the chapters are the essence of an organization like like mpi mm -hmm. uh the chapters are are where the magic really happens and so Absolutely. make a difference locally and once you've done that i think there are all kinds of opportunities to uh you know contribute on a higher level or a different level uh, at, at a, a board level or on committees and et cetera. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I know you're very busy, so I just uh, want to ask you one more question about maybe not work-life balance, but you know, I, I think it's more a question of uh, um, the, the, the rhythm uh, more than anything. It's not separated or whatever you, you, you're saying, but you started this conversation by saying that um, you wanted to be a drummer in a rock band and it didn't materialize. I don't think that's totally true. I mean, you, you might not be in the, uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yet, but my understanding is that you are a drummer in a rock band. Well, not anymore. I'm retired now, but uh, we had I had some fun with it. Um, you know, we were... <laughs> as a result of, of my work with the hard rock group, uh, as you know, we, we do an, an event uh, almost every month of the year. And we, we bring in top talent to perform in the lobby of the hard rock hotel. And one particular year we brought in the guess who, which will be a name not familiar to many of your, uh, many of your podcast fans, but uh, for those of us that are a little older, they were a pretty big deal uh, back in the 70s, I guess. But in any event, uh, I was able to form a friendship with one of the members of, of the band at the time. He was the uh, lead singer, lead guitar player. And um, as fate would have it, I ended up playing with him uh, and, uh, and, and several other of my friends here in central Florida who are far better musicians than I will ever be. And we had an opportunity to, to back him up, uh, in three years in a row, actually on his, uh, coming through Orlando. So it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun to do. I enjoy music. I enjoy making music with other people. I think there's a lot of parallels to, uh, accomplishing things with other people you know it's for me the fun is in accomplishing and achieving your goals and not doing it alone i mean there's no fun coming home and having a glass of wine and celebrating with no one to toast right to to, to celebrate with so the real joy in our business is is accomplishing things with other people and sharing that success and then savoring that success and then repeating that success and being able to maintain th those wins, uh, getting better, continual improvement. It kind of goes back to what we were saying. You know, how do you do that? Well, 
you know, there's, I'm an avid reader. I read a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I talk to people, I try to listen, uh, you know, the biggest advice I have for, for leaders in general is, you know, get over yourself. It's not about you. It really isn't. I saw a quote the other day that said, the best way to lead is to walk behind your people, Mm -hmm. which is, is an interesting way of looking at it. Um, but in any event, uh, you know, the fun is in doing things with others and accomplishing things with others and making a difference in the lives of your coworkers. Uh, remembering that, you know, we spend so much time together. We, you know, it's, it's what I said earlier, it's like my second family because, you know, there were times in my career where I spent quite a bit more time with my coworkers than I did my own flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So you want to make that experience as rich as possible. And you, as a leader, you're not just responsible for their work experience. You know, you, you have to invest in the whole person. You have to be aware of what's going on in people's lives. Yep. You have to recognize that not everyone maybe has the life that you have. There's experiences people are having outside of work that are not helping them achieve things when they are at work. So trying to be sensitive to the fact that people have lives outside of the office, outside of the work environment um, is, is really important. And being there for them, you know, when we have a team meeting every month, I say to the guys as a sign off, I say, remember, we're here for you, not just at the office. If you have needs, if you have problems at home that we, we can help solve, ask, you know, we're, we're, we're here to support you. So um, that that's that's important. A beautiful words. By the way, what's the name of the band you were talking about? <laughs> Windermere House. Got it. Yeah. You know, I, I have a friend who, who was telling me recently that this kid came one day and said, Dad, I was listening to this music. Do you know this band called Led Zeppelin? And I said, he said, okay, n never mind. <laughs> Another generation. <laughs> Vince, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to see you face to face. Uh, thank you for your leadership in the industry and um, all the best for the future. And uh, again, can't wait to see you face to face. Ditto, Eric. It's always fun to be with you. Thank you. Okay, my friend. Thank you, Vince, for sharing your experience. A great advice for everyone listening. Uh, you're a true leader and I uh, appreciate your friendship. Thank you again for taking the time. If you want to connect with me, please go on LinkedIn or join uh, my Facebook group, www.evenbusinessformula.com slash group, where we discuss everything related to our industry and owning our business in the meanings and event industry. Thank you. <laughs>